Welcome back from that report. The ability of an organization to achieve its goals depends largely on employee performance. Uh, employees who are fulfilled and productive can be instrumental asset in steering an organization towards success. Despite this, though, many managers find it challenging to motivate employees and improve their performance. Barista Sheye Awokwetu is a trained legal practitioner, principal partner of Lusheye Awokwetu & Co., a law firm established in 1996. He's the managing director of Norwood Executive Drivers Management Limited. He is an entrepreneur having business interest in health, human capital development and property development and management. He is a certified coach, trainer with the John Maxwell team, an alumnus of the prestigious Haggai Leaders International and Daystar Leadership Academy. Also, he is the CEO of Grow Leadership Development Center, a center set up to help people discover, develop, deploy, and maximize their leadership potentials. He joins me now to discuss more on boosted employee performance through organizational leadership. Many thanks for joining me. Thank on you very Plus much. It's a privilege Business to be Insight. here. It is indeed my pleasure. In my intro, I said that um, a whole lot behoves on uh, the leadership or organizational structure to actually uh, best uh, the right performance uh, from um, the employees. Um, but most of the time, some people seriously have that challenge of actually knowing how to motivate their employees. Why is that a challenge? Well, I think I should start uh, by saying that when you don't have a good understanding of what leadership is, mm. you don't know how to move your organization forward. Many, many years ago, when I started my journey on study of leadership, uh, there's this definition that comes to mind. He said every organization is a lengthening shadow of the leader. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a good understanding of what leadership is, it's going to be very difficult for you to move others. Mm -hmm. One of the things I have to point out straight away is that uh, I discover along the line that as a manager, you manage resources, mm. but you can only lead human beings. Mm. So when you tend to manage human beings, you run into problems. You will not get the best from your employee. But when you intend to, when you make up your mind to lead them, mm. you get the best. Okay, so them. let me just butt in now. What's the difference between managing and um, leading um, the human capital development? Okay, what I'll say is that manage, managing resources mm. it's easy it's just maintaining the status quo like let's take this place for an instance now you have uh, you have a trajectory growth you have a uh, profit margin growth so all you need to do as a good manager is to ensure that the vision of the company you know is achieved that's your work but mobilizing people encouraging people to go along with you, mm. involve you leading them, not managing them. Okay. If you, as a manager, one of the major differences between a manager and a leader is that a manager is just to maintain status quo. Mm. But you know, we always tell ourselves that we're all a manager on our way to being a leader. Mm. There's a different, you know, the, some people say that it's a very tiny line, but there's a lot of difference. Okay. You know. Okay, let me take it another step forward. Okay. Uh, in the reports that we just watched, uh, one of the respondents there, uh, that's the Ine Abimbola, she said something about most people just want to be founders, uh, managers, executors, and uh, you know, just be in charge of, of almost every aspect of um, the operation yes, of sir. their business. But um, is it uh, a thing that uh, one cannot be a founder and um, a leader or a manager all at the same time in his or her business. You can, but if you have the mindset of living a legacy, mm -hmm. you will have to create a system. Okay. You know, if a place cannot run without you, that's mm -hmm. a problem. Oh, wow. That's a fundamental problem. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things you come to realize is that if you look at, sorry to use, but you just have to use the one that's working. If mm -hmm. you look at companies in UK, for instance, yes. US, you have companies that run the circle hundred years and what have you, and they are still counting. Mm. If you take Uma Bank, First Bank, and some of the set up in Nigeria, how many individuals that you can you see? Mm. You know that over time, they've gone through the circle of leadership, you know that the founder is no longer alive, you know? What happened? What do we have this side of mm. the world? What we have at this side of the world is that you have immediately the founder dies, Everything just go down with the founder. Mm. When you go around Lagos, I see some 
beautiful hospitals. Mm. I don't want to mention them. You know, beautiful hospital, and you see that they are just a carcass mm. of what they have now. So if you want to be the founder, you want to, you know, develop it, you want to be the manager, you want to be everything at the same time, immediately, and you don't translate that to your employee. Mm. You don't give room for others to join you. That's what will happen. Merely you leave the stage. That's the end. But if you are looking at leaving a legacy, mm. you need structure. That's like system. a generational business. Yes. You need structure. You need business. Mm. And you know, I say you need structures and you need to, you know, you know, you need to put your values down mm. so that anybody that joins, you know that this is the trajectory we are taking as an organization. Okay. At a time where uh, entrepreneurial development is actually uh, taking center stage, you know, you find out that uh, mostly in uh, our academic, uh, you know, curricula and every other thing, uh, they teach, you know, entrepreneurship development. But uh, the issue of um, leadership um, is actually a challenge because uh, we are not being taught at an early age. Uh, and uh, if you you might agree with me that um, the leadership is one of the issues that we have in the country, yes. and that's one of the reasons why most businesses um, fail. Does one really need to get through or go through um, a leadership uh, training for one to succeed in business? For you, if you want to just succeed, and everything ends with you, you might not need to. Hmm. But if you want to go beyond living a legacy and things translating, then you need to. Hmm. Many years back, I started my uh, journey on study of leadership. I think it was 1995. Mm. There was a particular thing we were supposed to do, and we we're looking for people. We we're looking for leaders. We we're looking for leaders, not people that talk leadership, but we we're talking about people that lead by example, that like mm. you could see all over there. But within the circle, there were few, mm. very, very few. And so that's actually arose my interest and I started the journey and it has been a very beautiful journey. You know, if you really want to lead in a such situation, you want an organization to run, whether you are there or not, you need to understand what leadership is. I'm mm. very sorry, we have few people, mm. even in the business world. Mm. We've discovered that you can be a manager to succeed in the business world, but if you're going to leave a legacy, let's look at Nigeria for instance. We've had people coming into business, doing very well, but immediately they leave the stage. What happened to them? Mm. Like I said, I don't want to call names. But what happened to their business? They just realized that everything gradually, 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 gradually go down the drain. It's a half sense of effective leadership. Okay. Okay, fine. In passing, you talked about um, uh, leading by example. Yes. You know, I, let me paint a scenario right now. Some uh, bosses or some uh, line managers, they tend to see themselves as um, everything, uh, you know, must uh, run uh, by them. them. They think that um, they are the alpha and omega of their department or the line that they manage. But the issue of uh, leaving by ex or leading by example does not really come to bear because most times they just want to churn out responsibilities for their employees or their subordinates to follow. At the end of the day, they seem to have a bit of friction and um, the, you know, the organizational goal is not actually met. So how do you manage such situation for leaders who are not charismatic and who cannot really carry people along? Well, it, it, it all depends on what the organization wants to achieve. You know, it's a very fundamental thing that you have leading as an organization, that its organization is not just about you. Mm -hmm. If I'm working in a place and I look at the trajectory of my life and I realize that in a few years' time, the person I'm working under will not lead me to where I'm going. What do I do? I exit the place. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. And it's something that everyone that finds himself, that has the advantage, you know, that have the privilege of leading others, you also think about, mm -hmm. is not all about me. It's easy. That's why they're core managers. They manage things. You could just come, team, this is what we're going to achieve. This is this, this is that, this is that. One of the things you do in that situation is that there will not be any room for creativity because you've already handed mm -hmm. over to them. But it should be so flexible in such a way that, look, guys, this is where we are going. What's mm -hmm. your opinion? What do you think? What do you think? Simply. And you, simply. And you now bring everybody together. Then you'll be able to create an environment that is a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. There's something in this. And when 
when when the the the, the credit comes, you know, how will I put that? When the 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 result comes mm -hmm. as a leader, not a manager, you should be able to share around. Mm -hmm. I would love a I would love, you know, that was something I was thinking. My team were working on a project and that's time for award. I will not just be there alone. Mm -hmm. I want every member of my team to. It's mm. telling them that, look, guys, without you, without you, we cannot get this thing done. Everybody that is watching this show now, they're looking at you. But you all know that <laughs> it's not just you alone. Mm. You have a lot of team. Of course. You know, and that's why when you're going to round up, like I watched one before we came away, mm. when she was rounding up, she had to give credit to, those to people behind, behind the scenes. The scene. Mm -hmm. That is what we are talking about. If you want to enhance performance of people you are working with, mm -hmm. if you want to encourage them, if you want to motivate them, you need to acknowledge. All right. Give credit. All right. It is still a business insight on Plus TV Africa. My guest uh, is still here with me, uh, Barista Shea. I will go to, but we'll take a quick break. I will be talking about um, what makes uh, a leader a leader, and of course, uh, what they can do especially when um, the business is actually having challenge that they need a bit of motivation for those um, that they are actually superintending. In the moment, Business Insights will return back to your screen. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at organizational leadership and, of course, um, boosting employee and of motivation and performance. And my guest is uh, Barista Shea Aukbetu. Many thanks for staying with us. Thank you. Yeah, just before the break, uh, we talked about uh, a leader who uh, is actually having challenge and um, the subordinates and people that uh, he is actually managing or leading, rather, are having challenges and they've actually lost um, the morale. So how can you... Uh, bring them back up to speed and make sure that uh, everyone is at the same page. Okay, thank you. I think the starting point should actually be when things were rosy, mm -hmm. what was the relationship with okay. you? What keeps your employers with you mm -hmm. when things are tough mm -hmm. is the way you treat them when things were rosy. When things were rosy, when the organization was doing very fine, was all attention on you? Mm. Were you sharing credit with them? So the likelihood is that when there's problem, you might not likely stay with you. To answer your question now, at that particular time, when point in time, one of the advice I will give is that the leader must remain focused. He mm. must remain focused on the goal. It's a fact of life. Mm. Some people will live within that. And if that's what Actually, that's what tests their loyalty. Is this person, is the employee, is he committed to me? Oh. Well, you see, one of the way through is for the manager or the leader, in this case I was discussing, to be open. To be what? Open. Open, okay. Never pretend that you are superwoman being because oh. there's nobody that is superwoman being except the Almighty God. Okay. You are not. Oh. Be authentic. Yes. Let people know what's going on. Okay. Because when you cover things and you pretend that everything is okay, mm. they want to assume that things are okay. So it's explaining things to them. Say, look, this is where we are now. Mm. With the reality of things, this is where we are now. But I believe that this is where we are going. We could get to where we are going if we come together as a team. Mm. And so whatever comes in mm. at that particular time, the leader has to make a lot of sacrifice. Okay. You guys... This is what came in. You can have this, you can have this. Okay. What about you, Oga? Oh. Don't worry. All right. Don't cope. Okay, so I just want you to, as we round off right now, I just want you to advise um, entrepreneurs, uh, those who are actually starting now, and um, they have um, this big dream of um, passing on their businesses uh, to maybe their children or grandchildren, and um, they really don't really know how to go about it, but it's just their yeah, prospect. That's what they have in mind. That's the big picture they see. What would your advice for that person be in one minute? Well, what I would say is, look, one, you need to be future-oriented. Let your mindset not just be about you. And of recent, you know, I was discussing with some group of people. I said that it's different between being employed and being an entrepreneur. When you are employed, everything you want, it's just for yourself. But when you're an entrepreneur, you have 
the, the mindset of, look, you are futuristic. When you are futuristic, the second thing you are going to do is to be systematic in all that you do. Set a system that will work. Yes, it might not start working now. You know, and one of the system I would advise you to set is separate what comes in as any from what you spend. Let there be different. Don't, no matter how small what is coming in now, know that that is for the business. And if that's the only thing you are doing for now, there's no other business by the side, put yourself on salary from the one. Even if you are not getting the salary now, know that, look, this is the system I'm setting in place. And as much as possible, we all need help. At a particular time in time, you know that you need assistance from me. And don't be shy, don't shy away from it. Look for people that believe in what you are doing and bring them on board and make everything plain. Share this. Get a lawyer to advise you properly on the legal structure and you are good to go. All right, thank you. You've given so much wonderful nuggets for people. Uh, I'm sure they have gotten what they need to really move on. Many thanks for being a part of thank the show. Thank you very much. Barista, I will bet you. It's a privilege. All right, as we go on the show, I'm, I must say a very big thank you to my guest uh, who um, has been a part of the show and who has actually given out useful insights for people who have leadership challenges and those who are actually starting out. But then again, the event experience Africa Texas has hosted major stakeholders, event professionals, creatives, and business heads in the event industry since 2019 at the grand conference that sets the pace for an eclectic year as a professional in the events industry. Since the global downturn, Texas resumed activities post-COVID in 2023 by hosting delegates from across Africa to an excellently planned and well-executed conference themed reset. But this year's theme was geared at encouraging and guiding diverse stakeholders on growth pathways, profitability, and accessing new markets in the industry during a recession. I'll leave you with details of that report. I am Justin Academy Business Insight returns to your screen same time next time. Bye for now. This one is nice. Okay, you look nice in this one. And so that was something that uh, event managers were having to do. The event planning business is highly profitable and can be started with no or relatively low capital. It is, however, pertinent to note that it is a networking-oriented activity. With the progressive comeback from the pandemic, stakeholders have converged on Event Experience Africa to share and connect with other professionals to better position themselves to hear the ground running in 2023. Led by Nigeria's foremost event planner, Funke Bokana Obrute, participants were intensively involved in an informative and unusual experience. They were engaged on drivers for sustainable business growth, curated sessions, emerging innovations and trends in the industry. They need a change of mindset. And for me, reset is either moving backwards, turning around, moving forward, pausing and rethinking. You know, you can either do a hard reset where everything changes or you just do, you reset your mind, you reset your business, reset your life. Um, I would say melting pot, a melting point where everybody can come together to learn, to relearn and then to just get education, to network. And I saw that there was really nothing for Africa. You know, I go for conferences internationally um, all over the world. I've spoken, I've attended um, over the years. And I know that we can be very expensive. First of all, getting on the plane, um, buying your tickets, um, getting on the plane, getting the hotel, paying for the conference, and they're very, very expensive. But I just thought, how can we make it nearer for people? People who curate experiences across Africa are the event organizers, event planners, the vendors, and people in the value chain. See how powerful it is to actually put all of these people in one room. It's such an amazing thing. So uh, if I'm to describe it, Texa is unifying Africa and figuring out great ways to make this industry in Africa globally competitive. Right now, the world is actually, you know, the entire touchlight is on Africa right now. Like I said, a lot of times people don't see, the, they feel, oh, it's just, it's just a big actual it's just a big color, it's just a big style. But truth be told, it's not true. What we do is basically curating a moment, a fashion moment for you. That's what your style is for So as much as it's pretty difficult to convince, sometimes your resume and what you've done and, what, and how you've been able to 
um, put your previous your previous brides or your previous groups together just sort of makes it easier. But a lot of times, it's convincing them. Texa 2023 was also targeted at corporate stakeholders such as brand and corporate communication activation managers, including experiential marketing companies.